What's up, YouTube? Rick and Ryan here today from r and &R Sports Cards and Locks. So, together in person for the first time. Yes, so we're recording this segment together. Hopefully, we'll be able to record more videos together moving forward. But we are introducing a new segment to the channel here in 2024, and that is going to be all about sports betting. Uh, we're going to take a more realistic approach to sports betting here, and it's going to be meant to definitely make money. So... Obviously, everyone, you know, your sports betting, the goal is to make millions of dollars, right? You want to retire. You want to hit one gigantic parlay and, you know, never have to do it again. So that doesn't happen. Yeah, it not, it's not very feasible. So you have to be very lucky and that doesn't really happen. Over the last two years, since it's been implemented into Arizona, like we've been betting basically every day, every sport, every day, you name it. We're kind of degenerates on that sense. Definitely. But I will say, we have gotten to the point now where it's not fun to sports bet unless you're winning money. Like, at this point, like, I've had profitable years. Ryan has not had profitable years because Ryan's degenerate side comes out more. But we think now we actually have, like, a system that we've been running for a while now that it works. And we've been hitting some consistent bets for a while now when we don't trigger our degenerate sides when some of the bad beats happen we make money yes so that's exactly what this segment is going to be so how it's going to work is we just concluded our first week if you follow us on tiktok or twitter that's going to be where we're posting our daily plays or in our in our discord as well um, so how it's going to work is we're going to be making three plays a day our three like play of the days we're going to post three of them and they're all going to be again realistic sports betting options for all of you out there ten dollars a bet that's how we're going to track it to keep it consistent. You know, that's going to be our unit for this segment. So three plays a day, $10 units. And we're going to recap how we did in the first week of this. We're in week two of 2024. So we'll get ideally 51 weeks this year um, of this kind of game plan to see, you know, how we do throughout the year. Or we'll lose all our money and not bet anymore. Not an option. So... <laughs> So, we're going to throw up a graphic on the screen here, sort of. We'll go through kind of what our plays were this week and kind of recap how they went. So, right now, think about the, the time of the year, right? Right now, we have NFL playoffs going on. we got NBA season in full swing. And hockey season is, you know, getting into the big time of the season. So, that is primarily what we're focusing on. We'll do some, some other plays every once in a while. Uh, I follow a lot of tennis. Rick follows a lot of soccer. So who knows? Maybe we'll get some of that on there as well. But for the most part, it's going to be football, basketball, hockey right now. So week one, day one was Monday this week. So we only got six days. Um, it was Monday the 8th. So national championship game. Yes. National championship game. That was the day our three plays were Washington plus five and a half was not the play was not the play started the segment off horribly. So I took that one. That's on me. That was Rick's play of the day. Pack 12 vibes did not come through Phoenix. You know, he got dominated by that Michigan defense. They lost by what was it? 20, 20, 21 points. I don't know. It was bad. I stopped watching. It was ugly. All right. The second play was Fred Van Vliet over 24 and a half points plus assists. Fred went off. He started off the game like five for five, didn't miss a shot, like easily covered. No sweat. Yeah. Third quarter cover. I think he ended up with like almost like 39 or 30. Yeah, way, way over the line. So didn't even have to follow that one throughout the whole game. Easy, easy clap. And then the third one was supposed to be, you know, a nice easy one. We picked Kawhi Leonard over two and a half assists. It was like crazy good data, like literally... We'll cover the last 13 out of 13 games versus the Suns when he plays more than 30 minutes. He played more than 30 minutes, didn't cover. So definitely unlucky. Hooked at two assists, so missed by 0.5. So start off the 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 new idea pretty terribly going one for three. Better than 0 for three, though. Didn't go 0 for three, but, you know, it's going to happen in sports betting. We, we take the, the L and we move on. Day two was much better. It was almost a banger of a day, but... First play we had, we had Jaden Ivey plus 24 and a half points, rebounds, assists. No sweat, super easy hit. Like he just absolutely smacked it out of the park. Second play, we had Sabonis under 22 and a half rebounds plus assists. If you guys are in the sports betting world, this one was heard around the world. After the game ended, well, actually the game was still going on when they did it. It was, it was about like five minutes left in the fourth quarter. They just randomly gave him an assist. 
the game was over. He wasn't playing anymore, and they just gave him assists afterwards. It was miserable. And it hooks by 0.5. Yep. It was a stat correction that usually, like, 9 out of 10 times that we've experienced stat corrections. They don't corrections, do it in NBA that They often. don't gain It's always taken points. away. It's always taken away. They very rarely like give someone something extra so this was so unfortunate this was actually a very popular play across the internet to a lot of people were on this one and yeah like rick said hooked ended at 23 so we missed it by 0.5 and then our third play of the day was emmanuel quickly over 22 and a half points plus assists he smacked that one in the third quarter super easy he's no been, been killing it since he moved over to toronto he's been getting the minutes it was uh it was a very smooth play there so we went two for three on day two yeah so we made it into profit day two we're even on the day like between the two days at that point next we had anthony edwards over 36 and a half points rebound and assist against the celtics they went to overtime thankfully yeah <laughs> it was gonna hook by 0.5 yeah he was gonna miss by 0.5 but it went to overtime thank goodness the next play we had, which I thought was like the play of the day, Kyle Kuzma over 22 and a half points against the Pacers, who's been getting just giving up unlimited amounts of points. They play at an insane pace. Like he's had a great history against them. He like went 0 for 6 to start the game and just never recovered. Yep. So, so I think he ended up scoring nine points. Like he covered like the last five of five versus the yeah. Pacers and just completely fell apart. Yeah, it was bad. It was not great. And then our third play was my play of the day, actually, is Tobias Harris over 20 and a half points. Tobias Harris pretty much averages around 20 points when Joel Embiid is out, did not play, easily covered. Hawks allow so many points to power forwards and it was an easy clap. Another third quarter cash. Alrighty, and then for day four, I thought I had an absolute lock here in Chris Middleton over 26 and a half points, rebound and assist in the NBA, NBA and the Milwaukee Bucks beat the number one team in the NBA, the Boston the Celtics. Celtics, by well, they were up 40 at one point? Yeah. I think the Celtics scored 30-something points in the, the Celtics sec The Celtics starters didn't even come out for the second half. Like, they didn't play the rest of the game. That's how far they were behind. They said, all right, you don't deserve to play today. So, that one missed, unfortunately, and I thought that was a lock. Then, I my play was Josh Giddy over 23.5 points, rebounds, assists. Basically, across the board, the Trailblazers are terrible against shooting guards. Points, rebounds, and assists. Give up a ton of them. Giddy cashed in the second quarter. We it, got really lucky. It was they, amazing because it was a blowout. They won by 62. Fifth biggest win in NBA history. Oh, so we got really lucky on that one. And then I had this play. It was our first hockey play of the segment. We had John Tavares over three and a half shots on goal. He cashed it early in the second, and it was pretty much a no sweat, thankfully. Um, the idea behind this one was basically it's his old team, and he always performs well against his old team. So worked out. Easy peasy. Alrighty, and then going into day five here, we're going into Friday, which is obviously one of the biggest sports betting days of the week. And honestly, if you haven't been sports betting much, like they really make it tricky on the books. The books are extremely sharp on Friday. So if you're ever looking for a day not to bet that much, Friday's the day, but always be looking for bait and looking for underrated plays on Fridays because they're tough on Fridays. And my first play of it was Jalen Green over 18 and a half points against the Pistons. It's always been kind of like a big game for him because him and Cade got drafted back to back in that draft. And Cade was actually hurt in this one, but I knew that he was going to go off. And he cashed in the first half super easy at 20 in the first half and no sweat. And then the next play we had was the Joker. Went with the GOAT of the NBA right now. And in a matchup that he absolutely dominates. He dominates the Pelicans and Jonas every single time he has the option. And we had Joker over 20 and a half rebounds plus assists. This actually got pretty sweaty when it looked like it was not going to be because it was a blowout. The Pelicans are our, the hottest team in the NBA. It's like, all right, it's going to be a close game. And they were down like 25 at one point. So luckily they had a little run and he came back in the game in the fourth quarter and cashed us out super quickly once he came in because he was, I think, one off, right? I think it was going to hook on us. But thankfully he came back in because the game got to like 15 points or something like that. So it and it shouldn't have been sweaty. Then the final play for day five was Clay Thompson over 18 and a half points. People haven't loved Clay this year. He's been very hit or miss, but over his career, he dominates the Bulls, covered like 25 plus points last six games. And so we took it. He actually covered in the first half. It was awesome and completed the sweep for our Friday. So it went three out of three. Yeah, it was our first sweep. And just to piggyback off the Clay Thompson idea there, the reason that he liked it and then I agreed to, it was like, when you're kind of in a slump, you got to find teams that you play good against. So you automatically go into the game with confidence. So 
we just thought that was like an easy make. And he started off the game ice cold. He was like one for six to start the game and then instantly cashed this. I, I, I think you were jumped ahead. I don't think you cashed first half. I think it was in the third quarter, but early in the third quarter. Maybe. No sweat, early. though. Yeah. No sweat. And then day six, rounding out the week, first day of the NFL playoffs, we had the Browns and the Texans game. And to me, there were, this was the easiest bet on the board. Like, I don't know how this line was so low. It was David Njoku, over 53 and a half receiving yards. And he had, he went under this, but you guys got to remember, like that was a couple weeks ago and Amari Cooper went for 250. So that was like an anomaly game and he got the targets and everything he needed. So I thought, all right, there's no way Amari's going for 250. He cashed it super easy in the first half, and that game was ugly, but that wasn't. The next, we jump right back into the NBA. Unfortunately, on this one, this was Laurie Markren against the Lakers. In his history, he is 1-11, uncovering 23.5 points, and I was like, all right, let's take the under. You know, you got the Lakers. They have they defend well. They defend big guys well. They have AD, they have Vanderbilt, and they have LeBron. LeBron didn't play, and then they fouled him, like, seven times so we had like 12 or 13 free throws by the end of it and it was literally the only reason why he covered and then usually people don't get free throws against the lakers so he played solid but is free throw oriented so kind of a tough out yeah lebron not playing in that play was actually a huge deal because lebron doesn't foul people like very rarely does lebron get into foul trouble at all anymore especially since he's older so i think that was a big big reason why that that play missed unfortunately and then to round out the week Alfred Singoon for the Houston Rockets had him under 22 and a half points. Basically, he's been terrible against the Celtics in his career. Kristaps Porzingis owns him. The most he's ever scored against Kristaps is seven points. I know he's kind of come onto the scene over the last season and a half ish, but over his career, Kristaps owns him. So going into this play, I was hoping for a blowout. 15 and a half point favorites for the Celtics. The Rockets kept it close. Singoon, I believe he ended the first half with 16 points. It was looking really bad but luckily celtics turned it on i figured after the celtics got blown out they would come back and play really hard and they ended up winning by like 35 points or something like that they sangoon didn't touch the court in the fourth quarter he finished at 19 points and cashed us out the end of the week yeah it ended up being a no sweat thankfully because it wasn't looking good all right everyone so just the final recap so for anyone tuning in right now reminder ten dollars to play and we're doing three plays a day so 18 plays this week because we only did six days. Uh, went 12 and six. We're up $43, four units. So depending on how much you play, four units, is it's, it's, it could be a, a big, a huge week. It could be a, you know, a smaller week. So, but at the end of the day, this is meant to be a more realistic side of sports betting. $10 a, a play, you know, most people can afford to do that. Most people can't bet $100 a play. Yeah, it's just not realistic. You see all these people on social media betting hundreds and thousands of dollars. It's just not realistic for people that, you know, live paycheck to paycheck and they love sports and want to place a couple bets. We're here for you. That is the goal for this. You are our target audience. Uh, we we are just normal people out here trying to make some extra money sports betting. Yeah, if we could do this professionally someday, if this like can stay consistent and we can raise our unit, that's that's fantastic. If we could finish this year out on these reviews and it'd be like a hundred dollar units because we've been making so much money. That's the dream. But I mean, realistically, at the end of the day, like $10 is safe. Like if you want to go a little bit more than $10 because you feel like that's not enough of a win, that's on you. But for us, in the sake of this video, we're going to stay consistent and ride this out. So yeah, that's going to conclude today's video, everyone. To follow along daily, please follow our Twitter and our TikTok. That is going to be the two main sources to find our daily plays. Jump in the description below. Yep, they'll be in the description below. Jump into our Discord. But yeah, that's going to do it. Really successful week, and hopefully we can continue it. Let's, let's stay green, everyone.